The following is a special presentation by the Happer Horsham Television Network. Tonight on HHTV. I thought school was scary enough in the daytime, and now... This is so freaky. <laughs> oh my god. Explore the scariest place you never want to be. My heart just cry. Mysterious events. Oh, it wasn't an image, it was real. Stories of unexplained sound. I felt my hair smash in the locker. I'm like, oh man, who could be this bait? HHTV presents A Nightmare on Horsham Road. A look at what happens at the high school once the sun disappears. Coming your way next. Good evening and welcome to HHTV's A Nightmare on Horsham Road. I'm your host, Miles Johnson Foman. If you thought this school was foreboding in the daytime, wait until you see this building at night. Tonight we'll do just that, so be prepared for a suspenseful and scary evening. But first, as I walked down into the HHTV studio, I came across this mysterious box. Inside of it were mysterious potions that, according to these half-destroyed instructions, have very spooky and scary side effects. Do we have any volunteers to try any of these potions? I guess I will have to try it. Thank you for volunteering, and tell us about yourself. My name is Terry Tucky. I'm supposed to be the floor manager for this program tonight. Uh, I have a family. I have a dog named Bob, and I love the color That's blue. That's okay. That's enough. All you have to do is take one sip of one of these potions for its effects to begin working. So, how do you feel? I feel strange. Like, I want to take a nap and sort of itchy. As she is getting used to the effects of the potions, I present to you a nighttime tour of the building. I can't wait. <laughs> okay, so it is currently pitch black. I cannot see anything at all, and this is terrifying. Um, oh my God. There's like creepy lights, like every so often, there's like a weird light like coming from a classroom, and I don't know why it's on. I'm in Hatboro Horsham High School right now. What's different? It's dark. So, normally, just from being in school and being used to be describing things, you know, teachers always ask me to describe something even though I don't want to. It's dark in here. I'm not going to give any big summarization. It's dark. I don't see anything. Can, can you guys see anything? I can't. I got on the night vision and everything and I still can't see anything. But, you know, I'm not scared or anything. Like, honestly, this is freaky. Like, like, I can't, what was that? I can't see anything. There are creepy noises. There are creepy lights. There is creepy everything. And I am not a fan of this. I want to leave, like, right now. <sighs> okay, that does not sound good, because I'm hearing voices now. I hope that's, that's humanly generated. I don't know if that's a term or a word. I don't care. I hope that's humanly generated. Hope that's not a ghost in there. Because if it is, then I'm in bigger trouble than I thought I'd be. There's like, there should not be lights. Like at all. <laughs> I thought school was scary enough in the daytime, and now, oh wow, I, this, this is advanced darkness. This is so freaky, <laughs> oh my god. Like, I can't even explain how dark it is right now. Like, I cannot see my hand in front of my face. Point is that this is actually kind of spooky. I knew I should have stayed home. That science book wasn't worth it anyway. I should have just failed. Man, I shouldn't have come in here by myself. You know, 
Should have brought someone. I swear to God, I just saw something. Oh my God. This is so scary. Wow, that was a scary adventure. Don't you agree, Terry? <laughs> Mr. B. Well, guess the potion worked. What just happened? Well, my friend and I were doing a nighttime tour of the building. When I got back, you were transformed into, uh, never mind. Okay then, so what's up next for the program tonight? Well, I was actually going to try and take a sip of one of the potions here. That tasted bitter. <laughs> anyway, next we will see Mr. Anderson and Mrs. Stunder telling their story of bathroom cries and other unexplained spooky sounds after hours. All right, so my story began, it was a night after a football game and we were returning our production equipment uh, through the main hallway of the, of the high school building. Uh, it was a normal uh, process in which, uh, you know, we did a after every sporting event. And uh, so we had to wheel our stuff through the back dock, up the main hallway, and load it onto the elevator to come to the second floor studio. Well, one night, uh, as we were uh, going down the hallway, I noticed there was a light on in the music wing. And uh, I wanted to make sure that nobody was there because we had to arm the building after we left and I didn't want to go back downstairs myself. So I checked over the music wing, gave a holler. No, nobody answered, no lights were on, and we shut the remaining lights off, assuming that nobody was there. So on my way back to help Mr. Morse uh, push the equipment into the elevator, as I was passing by the men's bathroom, I heard this cry. <laughs> And it was echoing through the bathroom, so we heard it loud and clear. And I turned to Mr. Morrison. Just as I turned to him, the cry started again. Short cry. It was nothing like I've ever heard before, so I really didn't know what it was. Um, the bathroom lights were dark. So what I did was I went in and I had to see if anybody was there. So I turned on the lights, checked out the stalls. Nothing was there. I didn't hear a cry while I was in there. And um, I shut the lights off and I said to Mr. Morse, if you weren't here, I'd be running down the hallways to get out of here. Because it was quite scary when, I, you know, when, when you hear that, the building's pitch black and you hear something echoing that you've never heard before in your life. Uh, so what we did is we just continued our normal process. We uh, took the equipment into the elevator, rode it up top, unloaded the uh, equipment and left without further incident. I armed the building and, and that was that. There was one more instance where we did hear something that was unexplained. We were leaving one night after another game and we were passing on the second floor through the business IPC. And as we were walking by and the, and the doors were shut inside and it was dark, we heard what sounded like books flying off the shelf, like a, like a crashing noise. And I turned to Mr. Morris and I said, well, this is the second time we've heard something and I know nobody's in the building and we're just going to ignore it this time. And he said, I agree. So we just walked out and we armed the building and, and you know, nothing was ever found. My story is from 2005 when we were directing the show Susical the Musical. My assistant director and I went to lock up the building from the band hallway and uh, what happened to us is we were getting ready to arm the building and the code kept saying that there was a door open in area 20 or area 53 it was and we were like oh area 53 like what's that? So we kind of walked around the building to double check that no doors were open or anything and we walked back to the band hallway and tried to rearm the building and it still wouldn't work and it kept saying that a door was open and I was kind of new to this because I was early, in my like early 20s and so I was like, all right, let's take one last walk through. Let's make sure like a janitor isn't in the building or you know that we're not accidentally locking someone in the building. Um, so we went from the band hallway. All the lights in the building were off at that point. We know that because we, we turned them off to make sure everything was all set up. 
uh, and we walked down through the main lobby, and when we got to the main lobby, there were lights on. So we were like, oh, well, somebody was obviously in the building. We must have, you know, we must have missed something. Um, so I assumed it would have been one of the Amigos. So what we did was we headed down to Amigo land just to check and see, and nobody was there. There were no cars there. All the lights were out. And we came back walking to the front of the building, having already turned off the lobby lights, and they were on again. So we turned those lights off. We both kind of looked at each other for a second, and we were like, that's not right. Like, we definitely turned those lights off. Um, but it was a long day, so we thought, you know, maybe we didn't quite remember correctly. And we walked back into the locker pod of the A-Wing, where we heard the sound of, like, hands running down all the lockers. Um, it sounded like metal running across. And then someone like yelled in one of the back bathrooms and it like echoed. So my assistant director, you know, turned down the hallway and was like, look, whoever's in here, you need to get out because we're going to arm the building. And at that point we were just like, screw it, we're going to arm the building. And you know, if they get, if they get stuck in here, they'll have to deal with the police and figure it out. Um, so we went back down to the keypad to arm the building, and when I started to put the code in, another light went on in the in the B pod wings, like or uh, the locker pod there. And we just looked at each other and like quick punched the code in, forced it, and like ran out the door. But the police were never called. Like motion detectors were never set off, so we have no idea like what the voice was that echoed or the hands running down the lockers. Those were some very spooky stories. They were pretty interesting too. Wouldn't you agree, Mile? Miles? Where'd you go? I don't know anything about hosting. How am I gonna host the show now? Uh, are, are you okay? Wait, you look like the person that walked around with Miles during the nighttime tour. Do you know where he is? No, I was just trick-or-treating down Horsham Road and I came across a mouse and suddenly I ended up here. Well, do you mind if you could help me host the show? Because I have no idea where he is. Sure, why not? <laughs> Hi, I'm Lauren, and I'll be your temporary host this evening. But in the meantime, maybe we should split up and walk around the hallways to try to find him. Wow, you are really smart. That is a great idea. You're like a genius. We'll have to take a little commercial break right now to try to find Miles. There's plenty of more exciting segments for you to watch right after this break. But before we go, here's a horror movie trivia question. What horror movie series had this spooky sound as its signature soundtrack? <laughs> HHTV is your source for news, sports, and entertainment in the Happer Horsham School District. For information about the district, tune to News You Can Use, which does more than give you headlines. It's Elementary, Eye on Academics and Celebration of Excellence are new segments that focus on academic initiatives and student achievement. Sports highlights, news, and features can be found in our Hatter's Sports Report segment. Our Community Connection Show puts the spotlight on community partnerships with the school district. HHTV, informing, educating, and entertaining the Happer Horsham School District community for over 10 years. Nightmare on Horsham Road, and now the answer of our trivia question. If you guessed Friday the 13th, then you were correct. Can we watch The Notebook instead? I love Ryan Gosling, he's so cute. We couldn't find Miles in time before we had to be back on the air. What do you mean? I'm right here. Ah! You're, you're ahead. I wonder where the show is heading next, but in all seriousness, where is the rest of your body? I think I turned invisible for a bit. I think I'm getting better though. That is really freaking me out. Here, put these on. That's not gonna do anything. Don't we have a sheet or something? Turning invisible was really scary though. I'll say it was haunting for me to continue hosting the show all by myself without you. <clears throat> <clears throat> 
speaking of haunting moments, our next story is a mystifying account from one of our custodians about mysterious alarms and lockers that slam on their own. But first... Come on, what's the worst that could happen? You could turn into a teacher? <laughs> Fair point, but eh, why not? Cheers! Cheers. Past Labor Day on a Saturday is about four o'clock in the afternoon. I get a alarm call at home. I come over here and they're getting an alarm call between the gym, main gym, into the cafeteria. I'm like, all right, who's here? You know, nobody's supposed to be here. I get up here, nobody here, no cars. I come in the building, alarm is going off. I walk over to the where the sensor is. There's nothing there. I looked in the stairwells. I looked at the the cafeteria part, nothing. So I reset it, go back out, make sure everything's locked. And then Monday morning, I was dry. I always come through here on the weekend and check things, make sure everything's okay. And Monday morning I came in and I was sitting right out front. And I checked the back H wing to see if Zygmunt was here, but he wasn't. Nobody was here. I'm right out front. And looking at my uh, iPhone, you know. I get an alarm call. Frank, we're getting alarms between the main gym and the cafeteria. I said, it, it can't be. He said, what do you mean? I said, I'm right here in the parking lot. I'm the only one here. So I get up there, get into the building, take the alarm off, walk in, turn the light on. There's nothing there. Nothing. Somebody came from the main gym into the cafeteria, had to set that sensor off. Either that or we got a big mouse running around here we better look into, but I don't think so. You know, but yeah. Yeah, because if it was a, a critter, you would see droppings. You see anything. You'll see him somewhere. He's got to be in the cafeteria under a table or something. I checked everything. The stairwell, you know, that we keep the genies and stuff. All that. It was nothing. Reset it again. And didn't do it again. Well, I do alarm calls. So every time the alarm goes off, I gotta be here at the building and check it out, see what's going on. This could be happening anywhere from 11 o'clock at night till five in the morning. So I forget what winter it was. It was a winter time, because there was snow on the ground. I was like really mad, because I had to get out in the cold, run over here. I went and checked check the alarm, and I was walking towards B-Wing um, downstairs. And I was looking, turned the lights on, looked around, nothing going on, turned the lights off, came in through the lobby, just getting ready to shut the lobby lights off, my hair smash in the locker. I'm like, oh man, who could this be? Go back over, turn the lights on, I looked around, there's nothing. I mean, there's not even a locker open, everything is quiet. Turn the light out, I'm like, this is weird, I'm getting out of here. So then I went and set the alarm. But this happens a lot though, being in here. Anywhere in this building, you'll hear a crash or a locker door, you know, and it just, it just happens and you're like, you know, where'd that come from? Or you check it out and, you know, there's nothing there. Wow, that was a really scary story about doors slamming when Norm was here. What's even more scary is the fact that I'm wearing this costume. And why am I wearing this? I'm about as equally worried as you are. Now, I wish I was invisible again. Well, I think we look fabulous. And you would say that. In any case, I think we're going to have to change out of these costumes, so we'll have a short break. Up next, our scariest story of all, ghost sightings by one of our custodians. But first, let's find out what costumes students will be wearing on this Halloween as a nightmare on Horsham Road continues. Arg. <laughs> A cowgirl, a pirate. Colonel Sanders. It's a surprise, you guys are gonna have to wait and see. Yeah, I'm gonna be a zombie for Halloween. HHTV now offers DVDs and digital video files of your Happer Horsham School District memories. We have concerts, sporting events, special events, and graduations available for purchase. Ordering is simple. Just go to the Happer Horsham School District website and find the HHTV webpage. Click on how to order a DVD and send an email describing what you want to purchase. DVD prices vary, and video files are $20 for two types, 
Windows Media, and QuickTime Movie Files. Video files are yours and should last forever. All proceeds go toward the HHTV department. HHTV, making memories that last a lifetime. I feel much more comfortable in this. At any rate, this past evening has been a really haunting experience with all the clips of the nighttime tours and the ghost stories. But prepare yourself for the scariest segment of all. Don't say that! I'm already scared! Embrace yourself because this scene will give you nightmares. Without further ado, we present to you... The scariest segment of all. Boo. <laughs> I was, I had just started working here, I was like my first year here and I was working in the area of the gym and I was turning off all the lights and going around and making sure everything was turned off and as I was just getting ready to turn towards the gallery, out of the side of my eye I saw what looked like, and I'm not even trying to exaggerate, uh, I had a little boy who was probably seven just run from like the icon room over to the aux gym. I had just turned to go into the gallery so I had just seen him right out the side of my eye. And it was dark because we had the lights of the, the exit signs or sometimes they were on, sometimes they were off, but it was dark. But I could see that it was a little boy and he just went running right across, right across the hallway. <laughs> what, did he make any noise on nope. the sound? Nope. <laughs> and I wasn't going to stop and talk to him because it was real. <laughs> Now, did you did you turn and you and then like did he vanish? How did he disappear? Did he, turn? he just went right. In. If you know where the area is, it's where the vestibule of the doors are up down by Icon. There's a little, you know, a little vestibule, and then there's uh, there's another door there, and he just went right into the gym area right there. So. And was the door open? In the gym nope, area? it was closed because I closed everything. Everything was turned off. Everything was locked up. There was no reason for him to be here. It's not the first time. I've heard other things in this building, so it's not the first time that I've heard or seen something. Like that. So he vanished kind of like in the area where yeah. the door, but you couldn't see if he went through the door. Well, he had to have gone through the door because the door was closed. But you didn't see him? Before. No. Is that what it makes you? I don't have to see him, but <laughs> you know, he had to go through the door. And it had it was like a long pant leg, so it was there was it was a leg and a foot, you know what I mean? It was like uh, from a oh yeah, I was a man. It was a man, and I just I mean, I'm assuming it was a man. I mean, I don't know if it could have been a woman, but wearing pants, but I'm I'm assuming it was a man. But mostly I, I I've seen there's only been men around here, so <laughs> I don't know what's going on in this property before, but yeah, I mean I, from what I know, you know the Revolutionary War and. A lot of people, a lot of, a lot of battles around here, so you never know. You never know what went on in this property a long time ago. Sure. I believe in ghosts. I'm a firm believer. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for watching our show, A Nightmare on Horsham Road. We hope it was as haunting for you as it was for us. And happy Halloween! Wait! Today is Halloween? <laughs> Why do you think there are those strange potions and decorations of cobwebs lying around the studio? I thought this, the cobwebs was just a result of this room getting older. <laughs> then why would we still be wearing these costumes? I thought we just wanted to get dressed up. What about potions? Do you think we just have random liquids laying around the room? Oh! Now it all makes sense. Anyway. Thank you again for watching this special, and... Happy Halloween! Well, I'll tell you how it is. If you get a call here in the middle of the night, say about one or two, in the winter time, when there's snow on the ground, okay, and you pull up here, it's like the movie The Shining. You know what I mean? You walk in here, it's dark. And you don't see nothing other than exit light signs or somebody left a light on in their room. But it is, it's creepy, you know? You hear things. Yeah, I mean, it might be your mind playing tricks, like I said before, but it is creepy. You hear things. You hear giggling. You hear balls bouncing. Stuff like that. Mm, well, you can't really think about it because you, get, you will scare yourself. I, when I leave at night, and I lock up my section, I turn off all the lights, I'm literally in the dark. The reason why it's scary uh, is because it's 
it's silent for the most part, and I call it a deafening silence, which means that it's it's there's there's so much space, so much darkness, and no noise. And if you have an imagination, I'm sure it can it can run away with you. Um, and it is scary. I, I would challenge any type of haunted house compared to just walking through the hallways here while it's dark at night.